I think in the past class we have discussed about a um, few theory things. Um, like say why point click is required. So something you can't do with a custom implementations, but it is very simple to handle with the point click. So you just handle with them. So ideally using all data connectors, you can connect with some, some third party systems. So this is a link that which indicates about how do you connect with the um, uh, external data source by data connector or data connector to a third party. We had require some other guys also could be. So this is one point. Otherwise work we have where you try to find an outbound message and this is something like a soap is called. Uh, I don't know, even this is also trying to do with the, like a soap based call. And this guy is also trying to do with the soap based call. So how do you justify this as a soap based call? You can easily identify them by seeing the uh, response which is getting here. So here workflow, I could see outbound message whenever it is tried to fire. So I could see this in XML format. I think even in the trailer on the date to this link we went and saw, and even the response was in XML format. So, and they just give the references as so based references only. So we can easily identify, okay, these guys are using so based integration or web services. But this is the point click operations that we do it. So when it comes to the, you know, integrations, ideally uh, we have our web service we have in Salesforce, like you either use rest based service or soap based service. Um, I asked you guys to install um, Postman. Did you get a chance to you know, install it? I installed Postman. But do you need, I need to register it? No, no, not required. Just like, okay. since it's a Google tool, they ask you to sign up and check. So because those guys will track what are the search that you're writing. So, it's, it's a Google policy that whatever you do, they want to know. It's not okay. necessarily that you need to, uh, what do you say, register and all. So required or not required for registration? Uh, just a minute. <laughs> Um, yeah, go ahead, uh, go ahead, Murthy. Hello. No, no, what I'm saying, you, do you need to, I need to sign, sign it up or not required? Not required, not required. Okay. It's just, okay. it's just a tool, see, look at even I also have not signed up. Yeah, it's just like normal things we have. Okay. I log in some time back. I have to check it. Okay, that's no problem. So we will do a postman check when something that we insist a connections or we request a connection. It's just like a, um, look like how developer console we used to do a trial things, whether the query works or the snippet works. Same way using a Postman, we check that, okay, this logic works. How to do it? You just send an endpoint URL and what is authorization that an end people are who are exposed to service, they are given to us. We're trying out whether your service is working or not. So firstly, uh, they may be having integration systems are they all giving us to do a development activity? First, we have to say that whether this endpoint connectivity is working, or are we getting a response? Only then we can start development. So without the response and request structures, we can't do anything in the uh, no integration standpoint. Either we expose service or you consume a service. The people who are exposing the service, so they are having a responsibility to share. Um, okay, let's let's frame this question is everything here. So where it is used, why we should use it, how to authorize and expose a service from the Salesforce, what are we exposing? So, so answering to this, so we are, just a moment. Hey Naresh, Hey, hi. 
so sorry narish i thought the link which you're asking for our previous recording oh, okay okay no, no. so so now two classes are done right no i think four four classes uh, okay. because okay. we have done with the uh, so batch it <clears throat> so something we call as eight second apex okay so total how many classes for this so i think uh, 10 to 12 days more okay now you have uh, started like lwcs no no we are doing with integration oh okay okay so uh, i just given us in the last class overview how an integration would work so okay the same way now we are expecting for to do a practical sessions on to this Okay. Okay. So we just just kick started on to this. Um, let's see. I'm just opening the last class. Watch what we done. Okay. So I was doing there some diagrams. I think I don't know. Yeah, this is one. So this is integrations uh, basic things we have discussed last class. Uh, if you see, um, how do we make a request? So uh, the to, to the left hand left hand side, if you see, they are McDonald's and Chipotle. Either we try to consume a service or expose a service, but rightly assume that McDonald's is trying to consume a service from a third party, uh, you know, IDC system. What they're trying to do is they're trying to order the materials, let's say wheat, flour, whatever. So in order to do that, say they are trying to connect to ITC system, but ITC is given you can't directly connect to this. So we have a middleware called as MuleSoft. Uh, so not only MuleSoft, it could be any other guys. Um, so they are in the middleware. Middleware people like they are just like a mediator who who do who does the translations. Because if I use REST and those guys having built the system with the SOAP, of course we can translate direct to one point to point connections we can have. But ITC is making some easy way for the people. Like uh, they can directly connect via through SOAP, or they want to trust anything they can do. Okay, connect with Mule Soft as a mediator, so they will uh, help you out in terms of request and response. Uh, so this is a simple diagram. So where McDonald is ordering for a wheat or flour, and uh, via through middleware like uh, Mule Soft, and so it is responding back with success order, and when they deliver it, an order number. So generally, if you do with the REST based service, you get um, response in. JSON format, but the same way if you try to do in a SOAP based XML systems, you would get the response in XML format. So this is the basic things that we have discussed last class. I think we are proceeding on to the uh, uh, this theoretic we are making to do our sample cases in the real integrations. So here a few questions would arise. Um, so while we're dealing with integrations, I said rest we have generally we use in web based applications. so we use for the enterprise applications that means uh, very complex structures or big big banking applications so still they use soap based structures or not only the banking if you have dealing with any order management um, something um, the procurement so all this you know the big enterprise systems will have soap based systems because generally they are using sap for that and those guys are exposing service with soap may not be they also so you know sap also has been exposing a service with rest also it depends on what what type of the service that you are invoking so they have provide that to you now expose a service from a salesforce yes we can do it or we can consume a service from a salesforce so some third party so these are the two ideal things we can do from salesforce both are possible both are possible in salesforce What is that? Yes, of course, I can expose service where I become the the main power where we we try to expose service, or sometimes we try to consume service from whoever like third party they have done. 
So in this case, we are we are consuming it. We are we are uh, consuming from third party who have been exposed service to us. So while we consume a service, so what is the thing that we have to know? What we when we expose service, what you have to do? So that is the thing still more elaborated here. So two types of integrations again we are getting down. We will try to say again, uh, are you synchronous based integrations or asynchronous based integration? So synchronous, if I say, okay, let's get into this point. And let this be going inside this. Yeah. So of course we are, it's, it's one among the um, exposure cuts in. So which type of category of what I'm talking So let it be inside of this. Now, uh, synchronized integration in, in indicates like something I call you, you respond back to me with, with some information. So for example, here. So this, I could make it as synchronous integration. So something I say, hello, you say reply back, hi. So instantly it happens. So then I'm whatever within a waiting period of uh, within milliseconds, I would get the response. So that is expected to be a synchronous system. If it is asynchronous, it's fire and forget concept, where generally we get a broadcast messages. They fired out and they we can't reply back then. So it's basically like no reply messages or no reply emails or a broadcast message. All these are indicates fire and forget where they are in as an asynchronous systems. So all the Apex class, uh, the advanced Apex, we just start with the synchronous class. The first four or three classes we had, no? so all are asynchronous uh, Apex, like a batch class, schedule class, future method, and then cubic class, all these are asynchronous Apex. So why we say that is because they are doing a long running process and we are uh, we can't wait for the long running process. So you just hit and fire it. So one after the other, the, you know, the chunk of billion, you know, millions of records they can process with. So that's ideally we say asynchronous Apex for those things. So here also, we can't say that the integration which we are writing it and we are waiting for the response instantly. There could be sometime we just go uh, run the batch over the night it should hit the third party systems and get the results and update the system of Salesforce. Could be. So there are too many orders came in the SAP and um, all that we wanted to sync to Salesforce. But this we can't do instantly, okay? Every day night, 12 o'clock, let, let it uh, batch run. And that is pulling all the records from SAP to Salesforce. Or an order which is created in Salesforce. So we are all trying to send in one go, night 12 p.m., uh, 12 a.m., whatever. To SAP systems because all the orders created in Salesforce, we are trying to send to SAP. That orders would be of you no know, to do check the systems available. So if they connect to the procurement team and then whether it is available or maybe we have to acquire from one pocket somewhere, so all they take care of it. It'll be multiple ways I'm saying. So likewise, um, so the postman's we is a good example to check the or test the UI whether the service is given by the um, third party systems, whether it works or not. Now let's talk about while we conceive what we require, while we expose what we require. So what are we exposing? We are exposing, um, we're exposing the service. Um, that we need a change or DML activity. in Salesforce. So that means we, we are the one who exposes service. So we have, when you say we have exposing, so we have designed the systems. What are the things required? Absolutely, we are the creator of this. So we would say that, hey, you can create a record. Or you can update a record. Or you can delete the record. Of course, all with this, we're going to try it. For this, each we provide a service. Each we would have service. Now, we have to give to third party who are people are consuming. What have to do is we have to um, give endpoint URL. So we have to give endpoint URL and we have to give. Um, so, if this is a recipe systems, we're going to give JSON 
request very important jason request to those people because they are the one uh, firstly when we talk in english we say that this is the pattern that we talk and this is the let's say i'm reading whatever it is abc and collectively this is grammatical things we have so jason request also the same way um so you're saying that if you can if you send me this request i will send this response to you for example to create a record i need to have some pattern for you so jason request for each service because the each service that this or the request could be different for example the creating a record you have 10 fields for updating a record you may have 10 fields for deleting a record you may have only one field uh, in the json where you try to send it out because you are idly you are trying to update a record you may have bunch of fields uh, maybe for deleting a record so you can send id go for no fire and delete them or you can say so this is all create update and delete so there should be another one is read read records so basically this just like again create operations we are trying to expose a service for each uh while we expose service we say that okay this is end point url where you have to connect with and this is json request for each service so post you create what i going to send it as a response to you so i should say json response json response for each service so why all this is important is so this is this is not only for this respect service it applies for the soap based but only one thing is difference is um, so here it could be json but there you could have an xml format so that's the difference which you have and of course when i talk about synchronous we are trying to return something instantly so you hit in point so we do a request you send an instant response to us but here also the response comes in but they come in very late uh, but we are not capturing them or uh, the results which is came in so we are trying to update the sales force but where you are not involved so they are free when they are i mean when the resources are free they are running at that particular time so we are not waiting for you so you came you hit a request and you got a response you updated back in and then you fired and forgot and then another service it indicates again runs so it it gave a response after some time and it updated the record basically you are writing a service at that particular moment you get a response and you are updating systems so we are not waiting for anyone here so in terms of synchronizations we are not waiting for anything but in terms of synchronizations we are waiting for a you know, uh, for at least um, so i think we have um, the waiting period of each service up to One twenty seconds. Uh, this service can meet. The service can wait for response. Uh, or else, exceeding them or throw. A great time to tell. Of course, so this is up to one twenty seconds. We can do it. So, by default, if you don't specify any set time, so what happens? Default time is ten seconds. So we can't assume that within the ten seconds, the service will load to the CP and then come back and responses. Okay, keep up to one twenty seconds. Um, so where where people are trying to hit us and we're sending a response, or you're trying to hit them and they are getting a response. However, within one twenty seconds, this is something where you set manually. If you don't set anything as a time, but default for each service, there will be ten seconds. Uh, but default it goes. So we consume a service from third party. So now what we do is now here. Firstly, um, we need to ask. So we need to ask what? Uh, please provide. Please provide the endpoint. So whenever I talk about endpoint, it's just the um, a URL which you are trying to hit to the third-party systems, and then based on that only you're trying to give a response to us. Please provide the endpoint. Uh, 
in the same way. So what should we do for request service and what you are expecting for a response? Please provide the endpoint to URL. So there could be another points also uh, where we say um, authorization. To authorize your system, what we require? Authorize the system. So they may give you user credentials. So could be credentials. Or any, uh, so based on these credentials, they will be generate the access token. So once you happen with this, so you're authorized to connect to the system. And of course, we also may have, um, so we have to give endpoint URL. So we may also have them to authorize uh, to our Salesforce system, um, where we say, let's take this, you have to connect with this URL. Sometimes we don't provide any uh, user credentials, so anyone can connect. Sometimes just we make the system as more of security. So where we try to say that he, we have to connect with this, this XY, ABC. So we provided access token only then the access token will be fine. You can instantiate a request to us. Of course, this all would also be there. So these authorizing systems can be a multiple ways, adjust user base. So username and password basically. Yeah. So it could be user flow. Basically they tell, tell us user flow. User flow indicates your username and a password when you give it, or it's a OData flow. Sorry, not OAuth. OAuth. So OAuth 2.0, or something like still more uh, JWT. Again, this also falls under OAuth only. So OAuth, OAuth 2.0 only, but they are more um, secure in terms of. Your certificate should match and a couple of them should match here. So how many ways we have not to get the access tokens or credentials? So we have user flow, we have OAuth flow. This basically is called as web flow. Mm. So in the web flow, we'll have OAuth. See in the web flow, one among them is called as OAuth 2.0 or JWT. So they try to use this. So what is this all indicators? It's an authorizations we do it to a Salesforce system, so all to a third party system, whatever it is. So someone is trying to connect to you. Uh, one more thing is I must is um, connected app. Uh, via through connected app only we are trying to do all this stuff. So via through connected app we say that, hey, you just give username and a password you can connect. Or you can say that, oh, with the help of the OR 2.0 only, you are trying to do it. So OR 2.0 or GWD, what they're trying to do is they are trying to get the access token to you. With the help of that only you can authorize to our Salesforce systems. And then only you can perform a request to Salesforce, like trying to read a record, trying to create a record, update, whatever. It's a very important thing. Where the other guys are trying to connect to Salesforce, that's the reason we are trying to have this. It's okay if you are not trying to connect to the party. Okay, now we are trying to connect to another guys. So we may ask them to give, hey, you are give us credentials or some access tokens where I try to connect to you. So for example, here we are trying to ask to who? However, uh, basically SAP developers are um, SAP based third party. So basically expose the service. So maybe sometimes they directly SAP people, they don't expose service if you think. Now maybe a MuleSoft guy, they are trying to expose service. So we have to ask to the MuleSoft, hey, how do I connect to your system? So maybe an authorize, how do I authorize it? So they give you user credentials what to be connected with. So four things we have to ask them is, this is the four things that we have to ask them. So the moment you join integration project, you should be very clear on um, if the, you are joining a project, you should ask them, so what is the purpose um, in terms of, are we trying to do update or trying to pull records? What is the, the um, record volume? So these are the important points to connect the systems, other generic questions, any integration service, other generic questions. So general questions would be like this. So the point one, data volume. So what we're doing actually dealing with this, data volume would require, because we don't know how many records in one transaction you're trying to deal in, in one transaction. Or overall with the bulk. So we need to know data volume. So if I try to hit some third party, so they're gonna result, uh, send me back with the millions of records, what to do. So I need to understand the data volume. 
So if it is data volume is in millions, so I cannot uh, do a simple service. I need to have a batch process. They would run chunk by chunk. So we require generic uh, question, something like this. What is your data volume set? We are trying to do your systems. What is the results? We're going to get it. So based on the request and response, you would get to know, oh God, these guys are sending a millions of records. Still fine. But they will take their own sweet time because you're sending a request and then response would get it. Within 10 seconds, you can't get the millions of records. You should have 120 seconds. That is, of course, two, two minutes or, or roughly. Uh, you have to wait for them. Um, let's say one service you hit and they should get, get the response within this time. As if, if they take two minutes for one request, if you have millions of records to process, then it takes a long sweet time. So we can't say that. Uh, at that time, you can't run a batch with uh, 200 uh, records in one batch because each record is taking two minutes or one minute if you think. For one, I mean, 200 records itself will take some its own sweet time. At that time, we cannot have that much records to progress. So where your batch size, uh, you'll be setting to one or two. It's okay. Because you oddly, we wanted to, you know, get away from this read time or error. So you are giving too many errors, but the service is giving you a response late. So then other records also in the queue. So this is always the you know, pain. So give them 120 seconds max and then you can send one by one. Still that is fine. However, they will run one after the other. So you not do any manual transaction there. So firstly, we'll ask is the general question is, so what is the data volume that you're going to deal with this bulk transaction? Okay, they say that this is going to come and um, so you will get to know what type of operations. for this service and what we're trying to pull them and what we're trying where we're trying to do update and where we are trying to impact this like which object all this so this is something when i know let's see when a service or some requirement is coming starting in task this uh which method are you using to consume okay we'll answer that also So gender questions, um, and this question that would be the last. So firstly, when they say that the service that you want to come to third party, so first instant question is, what is the data volume? And in one transaction, how do you want to do one or two or bulk? What type of uh, operations that we are involved with? So with this, we'll get to know, hey guys, you are involved with um, uh, whether this is the system that you want to do. Like. So they would say, what are the type of operations the service are in, uh, where we are going to try to impact this. So this could be really create update records for each they would be service where you wanted to impact with. So they will expose the service, no? So they will say which method you are trying to hit it. Okay, so when all we got this, so then we may ask few more questions saying that please provide the endpoint URL. Because if the requirement is clear, we can say that, hi, hey, give me authorized to endpoint to connect and send, send me the request and response how, the, how it looks like. So keeping all of this in mind, so we can build a service. I mean, we are trying to consume a service here. Which methods are you using for invoke or consume? For example, this guy says, hey, read records. So then we should say, for each, for rest base, we have a couple of HTTP methods. Well, Will consume it or in whatever you can call it. Will consume. For read records, we say get. This is the method actually. HTTP get is the method we have. For create a record, we say post. This is the method that we have to use it. For update record, we say put. For delete record, yes, we say directly delete. delete push anything that we can talk and um, for do uh, upset we say so something we also have a patch so this can also do um, an update activity
Maybe it doesn't need to be updated in a patch. So these are the couple of rest methods. Uh, we'll see them. But the very familiarly we use is get, post, put, and then build also will try to use. Sometimes the patch will try to, something you wanted to modify the existing one and also I wanted to get the new record. So you might do a patch. So basically we say, we say it as upset. Insert or update to do it. So we call it upset in other languages. Okay, so generic questions. What do you need to ask to the third party or mail sub guys? And which are the methods they are using? So based on that, we have to invoke the methods. Is any questions here? That's good. Okay, so this is where we consume the service from third party. So while we expose service from the Salesforce, again, we are the one who created. So we are saying that these are the things, hey, you guys have to connect to us. Um, so default 10 seconds. Now, again, generic questions for other guys or for ourselves only, we would say that the same thing. What is the data volume that we can accept from the other guys? Because how many records they can send us to create a record? Okay. So what are the types of operations that we are saying that we would be creating for those guys? Okay, they can create, they can do, delete a record in Salesforce, all they can do it. So we are saying that, okay, if you wanted to invoke the services, so these are the few, few services which we are exposing. Where we, we become the source. So that time I say, we have a method called as HTTP read. HTTP get, we write it this way. Because we have annotations here. At the rate HTTP get, we say. And at the rate HTTP post. And so on. It, it has a multiple things, HTTP put. So we are basically, we are trying to expose the service. So all that which you see here, they all can be exposed here. So I would say it's not done. So there are still more you can think. So for this, we use a REST resource. So where you would provide a URL endpoint URL by URL mapping. So we'll go with this. Basically, what we're trying to do is we are exposing service from a Salesforce. So very important point, guys. While you're trying to deal with integrations, so what you're trying to do and as an expose service, uh, when you try to expose service, we all prepare, we are, we are the source. So we should say that, hey, if you give me this request, I'll send this response. Where we are taking the control of the incoming records. And of course, whatever we've built only, they are sending the request. Because we said that, hey, you can come with this, only then I'll create a record. So, but whereas a consuming service, we don't have any um, power here. People who have created a service, we have to just connect them and get the results. And based on that, we have to process inside the system. So guys, both are you clear, right? About these points? Yeah. Okay. Whatever we discuss in the synchronization, the same thing would be applicable for asynchronous, but we are trying to um, a broadcast or fire and forget where we don't expect for a response. So every method we write, you no. Know, so we say that uh, public string and then method name, and you send, send some parameters. We are expecting a string value from them. But whereas for a asynchronous method, we say that it's a void method, public void method name, and whatever you passes. So for a void method, we don't write anything, right? So all they can applicable. I mean, this whatever we do, all are applicable but we don't expect the response instantly. So we are not worried about it. So that is what I think it talks about. So whatever we talked here can all be applied here. But these guys are uh, running in their own way. So we don't expect any response instantly. Okay, so let's do a basic service. Um, firstly, firstly, let's try to consume a service from third party and then we'll try to expose the service. Anything is possible. So we only can expose service and we can only consume service. Even that is also, <laughs> we can do it. So there are four free websites available. 
our sales to stale is only to give it a free x you know i would say source to uh, just see the endpoints and check whether it is working or not so there are a couple of them you can still try with them so i'll let's just give all this endpoint urls so you can try with those guys but before that before to that um, so how do we send a service how do we request how do we get it all that is important um so let's see uh, firstly we'll see the open source um, any uh, endpoints we get it or not so let's try with directly with the hinting this endpoints and we'll see whether it is working or not mm. expose um, um free consume free So few few servers they can look at this. So this is how the you are in, in feature state your integrations with me. So they say that hey this is the uh, API link for a get request could be, and uh, this API key and we enter this um, for example, JSON of zip code. Look at this. Some request randomly I made has given us uh, endpoints. I don't know. This code API is tooling for the entire world, or only for the US. I don't know. So you are um, source and your destination. Let's say you're giving it, and you're finding with the kilometers. So in the JSON format, it should give us. Sorry, able to see my screen, guys. Yeah. Okay, all right. So what I was talking about here is, um, so you, this would be the request. The request goes along with your endpoint, your key, where you want to connect, and the format. Uh, let's say the application type accepted with JSON. Uh, you know, your request format is zip code, and then can the kilometers make a request. This is where you are sending a request to the people. To the this uh, what of the service they are providing it to so that zip code service and the response we're getting as a uh, 400 so something that it says hey your request is not found see this endpoint this is a zip code api dot com rest based service and there's a token and distance json is they are having the request format and start kilometer and end kilometer sorry start um, uh, postal code end postal code and then kilometer we're checking it here this is a little get request we're making it. So get means what? We're trying to get the receiver response from them. Ideally, we're trying to deal with the read, read the record. So this is something that we're not trying to update a record, we're trying to read a record. So they have given error status code here. If you hit the 400, this is the correct, sorry, this is uh, whatever the request format is not correct. So APK not found or a zip code provided was not found or 400 so something associated with the time limit. So like that, we got 400 error, invalid request. So that means the request was not correct. So what it did? So this is something like a request we have, no? Um, so we have to find some US-based uh, zip codes, I don't know. US zip code. 
let me check for the US zip code it works out. Okay. This guy, none of them they are working. <laughs> Uh, zip code for <laughs> with any any zip codes of you, you know, so them something that we can give it. 28075. Which one? 28075. 28075. Let's see. This is makes a valid request. Yeah. So the distance is approximately 4,434 kilometers. <clears throat> Is getting this. So use this API to determine the distance between two zip codes. Send a get request to so this button. Of course, we can have the service. So firstly, API key is this. Guys, getting API key is this. Now, with the help of this only, we can make a service. So finding a distance between the one restaurant and another restaurant. So give us the restaurant distance or give the uh, one restaurant uh, API code or maybe postal code, another restaurant API code, postal code. So we will say the how many you know, kilometers are different so that you can go to the nearest uh, restaurants, whichever you wanted. So we can write such an application. So give the postal code of yours. We'll say which is the nearest restaurant to you. So you can do that also. So because we have the postal codes for every restaurants we, we, we have been entered here. So you just enter your postal code. We'll figure out which is the nearest restaurant and we'll, uh, we'll automatically map that. So till so far, what did it do? Based on the address which you're giving it, I mapped it. Now I can map with the postal code also. So something like you give 28075. So with the help of 2075, so who is the very nearest distance the restaurant I have, I can map them. So that also we can get it. So randomly we have picked up you know, distance uh, APIs. We can also use this for a REST API service. But of course, these guys are just for a get service. Of course, we can't have any separate service in working for ourselves to find that distance between these two guys. These guys are helping us out. Now let's try with the postman, the same thing which they are given the UI. Can we do it in the postman? So let's try to do a new activity. Um, so getting a basic create request. So collection. So the request name is, let's say, API zip code. Not required on. So I'm just clicking on this directly plus, and I say get request. I can send this same point to URL. In the authorizations, <clears throat> so what I say is, we say too many things we have to record this. No auth, that means no password. API key, whatever they give me, API key will look like. So basic auth would have a username and a password, at least if username and a password would have at least. So auth 1.0, maybe you are giving your consumer key, secret key, access to your security key, all that you're giving it. I mean, when you wanted to make such a type of an access for authorizations, so you have to fulfill whatever the type of the authorization we are using it, the same thing you have to give the credentials to them associated to it. So digest auth. So for them, username, password, along with your advanced things required. If I say API key, only you know, providing the key value and enter, that is more than enough. So now let's say, uh, what is the key there and no getting there? And what is the value? I don't know, these guys have not given me APIs. Uh, what do we hit with? So we say, so this is the value. We know what the key they're passing. Still, it's a question. I'm just simply saying API key. So 
see query parameters where you wanted to pass this headers the key value you are passing where you want to pass this query params and i send you are sending in the url only so let's decide that and then again uh, this is a request you made okay we'll take example of this so this is your url now either you have to frame it such a way that you are trying to frame as exactly as this guys whatever they giving it and your zip code and the entrance whatever that you enter okay fine if this unit is by kilometer or mile so we have to spend here so in the body So this API that we're sending it. So what else other key we have? Uh, we have zip code one. So so we're passing zip code one. And we're passing zip code two. And passing with the units. So these are the input request formats, right? And we see. Zip code. So this is key value. So this is not something Salesforce. This is randomly we trying to hit from the postman and checking the service is working fine or not. So look at this. When I do a change here, all on the top, did you see this construction is happening? HTTPS zip code slash rest slash these are the query params how do we send it but by, by sending this um so api key also was included randomly we'll fire it let's see so it says It throw an error to us. Saying that there is no such service. Why? Because the transition API key, whatever they're expecting for them, it was not matching anything. So if you don't do anything, we just simply send this request. So we don't use any key. Um, just leave like this, no auth. And the params, I don't want anything here to be passed. So directly I'm sending this request. So we are trying to construct a thing. So let's send it. You see this distance they give it. So we have to frame it such a way that your API key should be there properly and your coding should be written properly. So let's use the same API to build the system. So we are trying to send it out the params, but this guy is having different way. So after this rest, they are assigning the API key and then they're having this distance of JSON and then start kilometer and then uh, sorry, start postcode and end postcode and the kilometer, it's a unit. You can give in miles or kilometers. Now let's use the same service and we will try to save to our account object because uh, or maybe a customer object which we are trying to give a postal code. So let's see, uh, we'll write a program for this. What we're trying to do is we are trying to find a, a postal key which is given by you and we are trying to hit a service. So let's do that. Firstly, what I want to do is I want to check the snippet is working or not. For that writing a snippet in RS space, we are trying to do a consume activity. See, you are writing a service and instantly you're getting a response. So this is something called as asynchronous behavior where we say, you would request with the postal codes, whatever, and you are getting the response instantly. So this is a synchronous based get request. You're doing it. 
of course whenever you want it to that party so you majority do a get request and you also do a post activity when they say that hey with the url of this request you can create a record so now let's try to frame this request and see how do we do it <clears throat> so let's come to a developer console so firstly what we have to do is when you wanted to connect to third party systems there's something called as remote site settings so so we are trying to consume the service right so implementations we'll talk about now implementation while doing an implementation is they actually are writing a logic here so first thing is when they try to give you an endpoint of course these are the four basic questions we are asking right please provide the endpoint so of course they have provided the endpoint looking at this ui i need to fill this form so what is that um, go quickly so this is the endpoint so this is the endpoint you already got it and what is authorizing token or some credentials that you wanted so they give me api key here so what is the api key that you got it so this is the api key i mean you're getting all the information that you have to check first json for the request so so they say that hey please send me in this format you see this So use this API to determine the distance between the two zip codes. Send a request to, look at this, this is what they're expecting. So your endpoint should be there, your API should be added, and you should have a distance and then format, um, uh, JSON, which format are expecting, and then a zip code, zip code two, and then units. So if you pass this, then we will get a response here. So response, it is, if something you've given a right request, so let's say this is the request you are sending it, If this is the proper request you're sending in. So then the response would get it as this way. So this is a document they have to give to us. So if we give a request, so, so this is the response to us. While doing implementations, yes, we have to fill up the, all the form saying that, yes, we got the endpoint, we got the authorizing URL, we got the request, what should we hit with? So we should say that this is the response you're going to get it. So based on that, you take a distance, whatever you want to do it. Now, very step, you just all this got the information. You collected the information. Basically, we can say this is a collected information. what needs to be done so what needs to be done in search was so for part of the you know implementations we have to step one set the remote site settings so what it does indicates if we are trying to come to third party guys now that particular url should be authorized within us so Salesforce don't allow anyone to kind of just go to this URL and go and connect. So in remote site settings, we have to say that, hey boss. So from a Salesforce, you would be connecting always to the zip code. Please keep this URL with us so that you can bypass us, should not block us going from Salesforce to third party. So remote site setting it indicates, so below is a list of web addresses that your organization can invoke from salesforce.com to another web addresses. So we have to give this information. You are trying to connect to some uh, zip code API in the sense you are connecting to some third party. So you have to give their name, URL. This indicates the security purpose case. So I'm just connecting to zip code service. So what is endpoint? The base URL is more than enough. So let's like say zip code api.com. Of course, they only having that at the beginning, right? zip code api.com okay so though you give this entire bunch whatever are this 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 we're going to give it so they're going to take the base here only 
So you give such a big. You try to copy the whole bunch. So they don't uh, use it. Okay. So all, overall, the you know URL only I'm trying to copy. You think that where what it is is this. So remote search settings, whatever you give the whole bunch, they don't take it. Only the base URL they take it. So for that example, they can't have spaces. Sorry. Okay. You go. You give such a big URL, but they only take in the base URL. So for that only, I just copied the whole bunch. Okay. Uh, so any question, guys? Here. So we are trying to invoke the service to us. Then Salesforce. Firstly, we collected few informations. These are things are ready with us. Yes, the request response key and the endpoint. Everything is ready for us. So we have done the set remote search settings within ourselves also. Now the step two would be, okay, um, invoke the endpoint. and pass the relevant so this is something that we have to do invoke the endpoint and pass the relevant request to get the results and update them in Salesforce. So now, so I'm going to define the use case here. So use cases, for customers, for customers, when they <clears throat> update or insert the zip code, Find the nearest restaurant. So this is case. So customers means who? It, that is an account. Uh, basically, it's a business customers or individual customers. Customers that indicates account object. So when we try to update or insert the zip code, find the nearest restaurant and update the same or map the restaurant to customers is there any questions here no i think good so your customer is going to enter some zip code. So based on the zip code, whichever is there is the nearest device. So I'm going to try to them hit them. Until so far, in the trigger programming, we all dealt with the finding the address. So now that will be a small change there. So we're going to do that. Uh, let's see a small change what will impact. Because it is on uh, trigger and trigger cannot do a, you know, uh, yes, what do you say, they cannot do a call out. So we have to use a future method there to uh, you know, achieve this. But firstly, we'll check in our Salesforce systems with the developer console. Are we able to pass this request? All right, what I do is, so now a few things I have to do in order to make a call out. We are going to make a call out to zip API code. So what I do is, first thing is you require few methods. That is something that which type of request that we're making, HTTP request, right? 
so so that we have to do so idly so i would be calling an interface called as http is required http mm, http you can have some name here i'm just giving random name http fire so this http is a class i'll tell you why way this is used and then so like any other general programming like java also we have http request response all this they will have it the same here also http request so this indicates i'm making some request So these are apex classes which is all dealt with to do your uh, mix your integration work easy so http request class we have http response class we have um so we'll write that also http response and say response mm. okay so few things are important so request so http is clear so request object you created response object you uh, know a class instance you created next thing is few things is very important so what we're going to send it as a new url uh, so first thing is string endpoint what is this endpoint indicates so you are um, you are you have to construct them very very nicely so till where we have this till the rest we have so till this is an active uh, url and thereafter you have to construct dynamically so for example here you have uh, string api is equals to so for api key separately provided so api key is this so this is an api key so what you do is after this uh, single quotes you're just going to put a plus there so then you add api there or it indicates so this api key if tomorrow if it keep changing you should not come and change it here you can change directly only at this place and this place you need not to have it uh, have it so you may put into a custom label so labels dot api key or labels dot zip code api key so you can directly put in some code and you can use it so none of them are going to hard code it here all all of them then you can put into a custom labels so first now uh, we just simply putting a single quotes and we're showing it okay zip code api then what else this guys have so after the api code you have to say distance and format which is json format or some other format so we'll say this json dot format will put us uh, sorry always we'll keep json as input so we have xml we get an xml format request or you wanted to have a json format so all that is going to change is distance dot json or distance dot xml so i would give a slash distance dot x you know json by default you not to worry about it still you can uh, have a pattern here string um, distance format so what is the distance format we have um, so i'm going to indicate so plus after the api key if they have a slash so it should be clearly notified yeah after the key there's a slash here because you're just placing the values on after this look at this they'll see here so then i should put a slash here put a slash here and i put a slash here because that particular thing is going to come directly sit here 
So says distance format. So now again a plus. So this API key we are just doing it, and you are concatenating the API here, and you concatenating the distance format here. Okay. What is next thing? Mm, next thing is would be your um, your distance. Okay, done. So zip code one and zip code two and units. Mm, so this is important thing. So again, we'll do that. String zip code one. What do you want to send it? String zip code. string what is that uh, units so here we are passing kilometers and let's give the place of numbers here for firstly we'll do a random test whether we are getting the values actually what we expected and then we'll see about the latest things triple Try zero and what this code was two eighty seventy five. Okay, we're good here. So all we need to indicate that okay. And then plus uh, so in the distance you already added this value. Okay, let's put it this way, not to add this. So this indicates, um, so the moment a distance format gets over, so you are having this front line to add it. So here, uh, by default, you have added it. So that's the reason you're not given here. So otherwise, distance format, zip code one, plus zip code two, Plus units. Yeah, we good there with the endpoint. So now, HTTP request, right? We have to set the methods. We have to get a couple of methods to set this one. Request dot. We have to we have to say that which method you are trying to deal with. What is this? HTTP request okay so don't have HTTP request dot set method so what method are you gonna set it here because we're gonna set the get method that's very important which method you're passing it out it's getting the request right you're just trying to read the value so request dot set method is get and you have to say that a request dot set endpoint. So in the request dot set endpoint, so we are just passing the endpoint, whichever we frame so far. So in this overall with the endpoint to request only, we are trying to, to construct the whole request. So we are good there. So we can strip a key, what we have considered zip code and whatever we want. So all this done. So request set, method is done, set endpoint is done. So now this response we created, right? So this we have to send it now. So response is equals to, what do do? This response is equals to, and this method HTTP fire. So there's a method called this dot send. Let's say dot send. And what we're trying to send is this request which which you frame. We want get request, we want this endpoint. So we're sending all this we have added to the request, we're sending it here. So with the help of this method, you're trying to send this request and you get the response here. So let's see. Uh, we will put a system.debug. 
and print result. This result indicates just I'm getting a response to our get body. What is that get body? Get body indicates the actual results what you're getting it. So let's try to hit this zip code API service from the code. So we got the results, great. Is it getting right? So distance is 4,434 kilometers. So, so our API service, which we hit from the snippet, we are good. So any questions guys here? Uh, so we are directly calling this from, but we are not using your, our Salesforce uh, that endpoint setting, right? Mm, we have used it, right? I mean, this is firing from the Salesforce only. So you are no, trying no, to... The one, no, the one you already created one entry point, Salesforce, somewhere initially... A remote settings? Yeah, remote section. Now look at this. Um, so I would do... What is the help of remote set settings until you? So get the API use some name. I'm, I'm going to save this. So this URL we don't have now. Look at this. Oh, URL. yeah. Uh, and then now you try to read the request. So we got an exception saying that unauthorized endpoint. Please check this remote search settings and add the zip code API they said. Why so the thing? Yeah. Before calling, we need to set up this. Okay. We need to set up the base URL. Okay. I mean, if anything goes out from the Salesforce, we say that this point, this entry should be made in the remote search settings. Uh, their base URL. Right. So when I just change here, so it didn't allow it to make me call. So that's the reason, a very the first most important in developer PD1 questions, you may get this. Um, you have a service in work. What are things are you gonna do it? So you need to have remote search setting URL to be configured. So set the remote search settings are first step. So what needs to be done in Salesforce? First one. And then invoke the endpoint and pass the permanence, check the results, how it comes. And then we have use case saying that, hey, go do, whenever you try to insert record, update record, check them out. So now let's come to use case and then do the stuff. So we have a snippet ready. I mean, that is doing the logic. Sample snippet. Which Invoke this zip code and it worked also, right? So, this is sample snip snippet we have. So, why I went to these you know, anonymous window is because first you have to test it out and see the results are flowing in, and then we we can make our progress changes on based on the request is, is working. So, my idea is if, if my testing is working, then I can implement them, or else we cannot even touch this. Now the first zip code one, zip code two, how do you take it? All that is our pain, we have to take it from the account record. So now let's no, cancel this and go to our, let's close all this. Close all tabs. I'm gonna open, so firstly a trigger, we're gonna open it. And then, and then specifically, we're gonna open the class. In the class, we have account trigger handler. So where you wanted to fire that particular uh, change before updating the save record or after updating the save record. And moreover, whatever you do, we don't worry about, look at this, we don't worry about updating on the same record, but it don't, I know it, don't, it doesn't happen instantly. I can give a good example. So before trigger you are doing with, so now look at that errors, I will get it. You're trying to, to find the nearest restaurant, right? But the stream. So look at this. I will update that snippet here. So that means I'm doing an integration in the uh, trigger. So of course this would call, no? So we don't worry. So this is the uh, actual code will save it. No issues with this. Because all are having a perfect data. So they should return some data here. On a before insert, you are trying to Let's not do our insert. So we are trying to create a new record. 
insert or update both activities thing. Um, so you basically trying to do, let me update a record. Simply updating a record, it should fire or inserting a record, it should fire, whatever. Trigger cannot run an integration. So simple example I'm showing. If you have a trigger and then you have a logic to fire the integration service, what errors it throws, let's see. And why you wanted to get out of this, uh, that also I'll show you. So now your trigger has a callout. So trigger cannot do a callout, we know that, but still we are trying to paste a logic code of firing there and we are trying to update some random record. An existing record you are opening and then you're saving it, right? So that indicates update. What it says? Execution of before update cause system, system callout. Callout from triggers are currently not supported. Are you getting this? You can't make any callouts from the trigger. So what it says, it's an uncommitted activity. What you're trying to do with this. So that is what it says. So if you go deeper into the errors, we'll see that. See, call it from triggers are not currently accepted. So they have given exceptions. Call it from triggers are currently not allowed. So this is the first call it exception they are having it. So if you're not doing it from trigger, you're doing it from some other means. Still, um, if they all running in a single transaction, so they say that uncommitted work pending. So this is the first error, the basic one. So they throw that error. If they pass this and then go on to the next. So now we know that the from the trigger is not possible. We'll not do this anymore. But this is possible where, if at all you're trying to deal with from a separate method called as a future method. Yes, it is possible. So, so what we're going to do is, we will write a method called future method. And I want to do an activity there. So, so again, I'm going to say public y um, fetch fetch by postal code. Mm. Postal code, zip code or anything is mean fetch by postal code so this is a request which is sending in and i guess already i said you a uh, few things if you wanted to send as a string or whatever you want i mean you can you can pass the params here look at i'm gonna pass few params here i'm gonna write this method here So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna do some few activity here. Based on that, we have to do it. Um, but this should be done intelligently. <laughs> Public void fetch zip code. Okay, we're good here. So I'm gonna take it out uh, snippet whichever we added today. The new record which is flowing in. So I want to check now. A zip code should not be null. So no more I'm going to use this service because um, we are not finding anything by street. So we're going to cut down cut down them. Um, first thing is we we may have the else path. That's okay, fine. If the zip code is not found, what to do? Fetch nearest restaurant by billing street, right? So we're going to take this off. So we're going to find by the zip code. So what I want to do is the whole bunch I'll take it off now. So what was our previous case on a trigger? You are trying to deal with fetch nearest restaurant by street, passing the billing street, not equal to null. You just fetch the parent ID. So we're not going to do that now. But same logic only, just taking it off. If it is used in the future state,
So what I can do it here is um, so this account dot where's the zip code? The billing postal code. So not equal to null. So then I'm gonna do a fetch call here. So else I'm okay to find out the based on the city you find it out. How do how they were doing this way? What if you do if the billing postal code is not there? What should I do? So to do this activity, uh, so billing postal code is required for us. Mm. Billing postal code is a customer's billing postal code. Uh, so what I want to do is here. Okay. So basically you're gonna send at the rate future, I wanted to add it. And, and I need to mention this call out is equal to true. Why? Because you're making call out. I have to say them. Fetch by postal code. So what I'm gonna do is here. Um, so you have to pass your uh, uh, postal code here. So need to make this statement here. We need to know the ID of the record, which you're trying to update. Okay. String ID. String ID is enough to me uh, in order to find and update this guy. Because I need to do a couple of activity. Uh, I know this ID which is coming from. So what I wanted is, what I wanted is, with the help of a string ID here, I need to go and find out who is the nearest guy. Nearest guy means there are so many other accounts we have, so we have to go find them. Public static what it is. So that's the reason this guy is throwing it. Public static white fetch postal by code. Fetch uh, postal code by a callout. So it is making integration callout. So you're just getting uh, account ID. That means it is it is account ID. You can pass actually a few params based on that you can get the record and update. Uh, this is one area we can do it. Okay, let's do this way also. String account ID, string postal code. I'm just getting a string, a string city also. String, uh, if, if you have a street. It's okay. So these three informations I wanted to flow in here. So why? Because this is the account which you wanted to update. This is the postal code of a zip code which you are trying to firstly fire it out. And we want this street because any other guys who are matching related to this street. So we will be able to fetch their postal code and apply to them. Uh, and we wanted to uh, update the distance also. So this particular uh, fetch postal code will also say that nearest uh, restaurant app, no, it will update. And also we would create a field call as distance between your postal code and the nearest postal code um, restaurant ka distance address. So what you can do is you can go to uh, object manager and then in account object, I'm gonna create a field call as So I think a number field will suffice because um, what is the results that we're getting it here? Yeah, so they have um, decimal value also. Let me give that. Number field, because flatly we need to have the numbers of how many kilometers is roughly, they're holding it. So I may say that, okay, 12 here and a four here. Four decimal points for sure they would be having it. 
so this many dots so many we have no or else we can have three digit is fair enough so three thirteen fifteen three so you can have up to 15 digits here with the left side and after the dot you can have three digits so this guy is giving three digits here the right side so so dot three decimal points is fair enough for me so i say distance between restaurants you can have distance between your zip code Okay, distance between you and restaurant. So that will mix. Distance between you between you and restaurant. Okay. So this we're gonna populate the value. Of course, we say that nearest to restaurant will find, and also we try to update the record also of an account. And where I wanted to have this, I do. I wanted to have only with my business customers and individual customers. So other restaurants are not required because I can consider only for the business people. I mean, who are, are my customers? Does you have any questions till now? Can you show what did previously again one more time what? The only you created a field for uh, this one, right? Yeah, just uh, a field for, for the distance. Yeah, I wanted to update even the distance between you and restaurant. So okay. this would this field would be there in my customers' information. I mean, okay. in my account basically. So each postal code and the actual uh, restaurants nearby the postal code should match. Okay. So firstly, I need to figure out uh, who is my nearest restaurant. So then, then only I can do all this stuff. So to identify that, I'm just taking even the street also. What if the street is matching? And then their postal code, I'll pick it up and I'll find the nearest distance. Uh, let's see, uh, any methods do we have in Salesforce by default to find all this stuff? <laughs> that also would help us. Uh, find the nearest. They should have in Salesforce. Find the nearest. Um, distance. Um, <laughs> hmm, there are location based circle queries. So you, can, you should have a geolocation fields added there. Latitude, longitude, you should mention. Uh, if you have a proper address, we can do a query like this. Select name, location, latitudes, and longitude from the warehouse. So you have to say that, what is a latitude? And based on that, they may find the, uh, look at this. So name, location from warehouse, where distance between this location. And the geolocations you have to give in miles, less than 20 kilometers. Uh, so they give an answer to you. But this is something that if you are entering with the latitude and longitude and of your corresponding destinations that we are having it. So for example, if you choose the restaurant, like um, your nearest restaurant you choose, it's just like in a Google map, your location and to the destination location if you enter. So you will say a distance to you. Is getting. You should enter your location anyway. Your locations, your geo latitude and longitude will be pointed out. And where you wanted to go, that is your destination. Maybe a restaurant or a distance. So you give their address. Based on that, it will calculate the distance and it will say you, hey, this is the a distance for this each of this record. So that way we can pick it up. Or else, uh, I'm just showing this. If you have latitude and longitude, you have been given properly. So there's a distance, a location with circle queries here to find out the nearest distance addresses. So ideally is all same, but we are not figuring it out like a Google map, giving destination and giving them. Here, you hardly, 
trying to enter your um, a new account my idea is very simple here you give a zip code here or you give you don't give a zip code here we don't care but you're going to give a postal code here right so based on this postal code i have to enter the data based on the postal code you enter i need to pick it up who is your nearest restaurant and also i need to say that the distance between these guys is getting i'm going to do two things here finding your parent and also your distance between these two locations so that was my ultimate goal does it make sense yes no no maybe uh, yes okay so we got these three fields based on the three fields i want to update so tell me uh, is it like uh, uh, if it's too late and then we can continue tomorrow also no issues so we have narrowed down our problem so we are trying to send um fetch restaurant sorry fetch postal code via so this things so we have to pass three params there so that we can indicate here in the if the billing postal code not equal so fetch a method where we're trying to say so what you have to pass is first account id you have to pass account id you have to pass and then account dot uh, billing postal code so if you have latitude and longitude mention no so you can take them so account dot so street i want to take it so these three things i'm just going to send it from the uh, for particularly from this record okay. so each time when the for loop runs it tries to fire the uh, call out and they try to do an update activity on that if not found this is jump, simply jump onto the city and then they find based on the city and then do update the record so firstly with the help of this so we are trying to update the parent record look at here i am doing a parent record instant update here but i'm now i'm just simply calling them here we know that the feature method wanted an instant record so all that we have we have to carry here and based on the response whatever we get to success so we have to update the parent as nearest restaurant and update the distance between you and restaurant field so this two, two two things we have to do anyway we got this record now what we have to do is we have to query the uh, related restaurants so that we have to carry here based on this inputs whatever you giving street so our postal code so based on this nearest uh, related restaurants have to map it and then have to give so this postal code dot the postal code which i queried so that record and we have to do an activity to update the record based on the response what you get so one basically one two three these three things we have to do tomorrow is it fine okay so yes we have written a call out method is yes, of course we are taking some input params here so based on params we have to query the record and query records we are trying to do an update activity so we're gonna do a dynamic thing here to map the zip postal one and zip two so this results would give us the um, kilometers so we'll uh, update to this value and for parent of course while whatever the required record we'll find the restaurant also and their zip code also so both it matches otherwise before update means what on a same account object i'm trying to deal with i'm just doing a call out here else a normal record will flow in so it depends on the conditions that which you're going to match we're going to go to the if or else 
of course our trigger can do a call out now you want to check the call out will fire now without any issues so we don't get such errors now anymore i'm going to delete these errors logs so it, it will do a call out but it will not update any record because we didn't do any update statement um so that condition if condition should match so what should we do is we should go to any account record and make sure our zip code shouldn't be null as a zip code i'm just rendering randomly some number i'm saving it so the moment the zip code is not null it will go to developer console zip code not null of course this guy is updating zip code not null it would have come here look at this feature and is running here so it is running without any issues and you got the distance also see so now we have to rightly we have to do it how okay the zip code which you are sending in and the destination all this you have to figure it out and do it now it is randomly hitting a test data which we given there so based on this test data it is firing it out and of course it is taking us data only it is not taking any other country uh, can you give the hyderabad any uh, zip code if you yeah? Five two, right? Yeah, if you have, <laughs> remember I am just giving Bangalore. Five two. So randomly, if you give make a request also, that should be available. Actually, it will say request fail. No, you give the zip code to a different country. I mean, this is taking only the US data, so it will not match to our Indian data. Uh, okay. So randomly we'll enter now US data only. <laughs> Don't worry. It's just a simple service that we're looking and testing it out. So 28075, I think. 28075 is yours, I think. So this is giving some data, right? So like this, we'll try to give some you know, zip code and then get some data. It's okay. So this will try it out tomorrow. So our uh, zip code and the nearest restaurant zip code also matches. So then we're gonna fire them. Okay, any questions? Uh, until now it is all trying to execute some dummy data which was given. So it, it is executing all fine. So tomorrow you have to query and update the restaurant and update the distance about them. So then we're good with this synchronous HTTP read. <laughs> Yes, right. This is get operations we're doing it here. So like that, if some service will see me, how do we do a post? Some service will see how do you do delete? Actually, they don't allow us to delete. This is something that a third party who exposes a service, we are trying to invoke them. So it all depends on the, those guys who are giving access to us. It all depends on them. So anyway, so we'll see this in um, tomorrow's class. No issues. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mati. Thank you, Mara.